Hi everyone and welcome to what is hopefully a fairly short guide to artillery. It's a unit that I really enjoy using and have been trying not to use as much in my games lately, but I thought it would be nice to go over the different types, what they're capable of doing and what's good and bad about each type. So the way I plan to go about this is have the first section which will be showing the units firing and a little bit of info about them. And then the second part of the video will be a lot more detail about those units, which is something more you could probably listen to without having the video up for the most part, unless you want to see the unit stats on the screen. Well, I'll differentiate those with chapters. First, what I'd like to do is give a brief overview of the units and watch them fire. And then in the armory, I'll talk about each individual type of artillery in a bit more detail. So here we have some mortars. I'm just going to fire position them on the town here. Now mortars are very good for firing at towns, they're quite accurate so they won't hit your own troops. They're also very good for laying down smoke because they have quite a wide dispersion area. Their range is somewhere between 3 and 5,000 meters. Next you have barrage artillery. This is your standard type of artillery. So you have paladins, which are the prototype unit, and the M109A2, which are the standard artillery. I'm going to tell both of them to fire at Delta. Now what I want you to notice here is how quickly each one aims, because this is a big thing for artillery, is time to target. So time to target involves the range to the target, the aiming speed of the artillery and the type of artillery so how fast its shell or rocket will land. As you can see here the Paladin has fired long before the M109A2 has got a shot off. Simple as that. Its salvo is going to be finished long before the M109A2. That's beneficial for two things. One, it means you're going to move them faster. Two, it means that if you're attacking an enemy unit that might move, you've probably got more chance of catching it especially if you're doing counter-battery artillery fire, so if you're aiming at enemy artillery just as they've started firing, for example. Then let's talk about tube artillery. So the M110A2 is a type of tube artillery. These are sniping units. They are not barrage artillery. These are highly accurate at range and very good at taking out individual units. So as you can see, the dispersion circle isn't getting much bigger once you get all the way up to alpha. These are slow to fire and they fire very big shells and they only carry two each and they are very expensive to rearm so they will drain your fob very quickly. Then the last one I want to show you here is a special unit. This is the M270 ATA CMS. This carries two small ballistic missiles this has an immense range and is obscenely accurate and does 20 AP damage. This will take out vehicles with potentially just one rocket. Now, if you click to fire that, not only is it pretty fast aiming, you will see that the missile is also a cluster munitions missile. So I'll quickly track this across the map. It's very fast firing. And we can watch it catch up to the other artillery pretty much and watch it drop its payload see how accurate that was that's pretty much where i targeted it and it hit it and equally if it had launched both missiles the second missile would land in pretty much the same place let's take a quick look at rocket artillery which i'll do from the russian side let's start with the most basic which is the grad as you can see, it has a massive dispersion area. And this is the same for any rocket artillery, especially at range. This is why they're not very good for taking out individual units. However, they are very good for making enemy lines panic, be that an advancing line or a defensive line. Let's fire at Dimitri and see what kind of a mess they make. While they're preparing to fire, Let's also fire the Uragans, which are very similar, but have a slightly tighter dispersion at that range and a higher damage output. Incidentally, the Uragans also fire a lot faster.
but you can see how wide an area the grads cover. That is huge, and you're not going to do much damage with that, but you are going to make the enemies panic. The Urograds, they're a lot more expensive, and they are covering a much tighter area, so they're probably going to kill something. Then a personal favourite of mine, the Smirch. This is a special unit which is quite long range, fairly accurate, but it doesn't need to be too accurate as it fires a barrage of rockets which have cluster warheads. This can be devastating against an armoured column that's either stationary and hiding, or potentially you catch them off guard moving. Again, the Smirch has a fairly fast firing time. Watch these shots hit, just so you can see that dispersion of cluster shells. Now the Smirch has an AP power of 8, so you're going to want to hit a target multiple times in comparison to the M270, which hits for 20 AP damage per shot. And finally, my personal favourite and also the bane of my existence in many games, the Burrettino. This is devastating for infantry in any situation. If you're going to hit infantry with this, they're going to die. If they're garrisoning a town, they're going to be wiped out. If they're in the forest, they're going to be wiped out. You're going to be lucky if any of Yonin survive after getting hit with its napalm rockets. Right, just hopping back to the Americans for a moment, there's one last thing I'd like to talk about with RT, counter battery fire and moving your artillery. Counter battery fire is where you fire at enemy artillery, basically you are countering them by firing at them. So if we go to where their base would be and I fire, this would be me firing at their artillery that has just fired. Even if you can't see their artillery, you can see the little shots where it's coming from. Any player who is playing artillery well is going to be moving their artillery after every shot. So let's assume that our M1 and 902 has fired. You should immediately move it and get into the habit of doing that. You don't have to move it across the map. Just gently walk it around the fob in a wide arc. But make sure you never stop and fire next to a command vehicle. Because if someone counter batteries you, they're going to kill your command vehicle. And that's just very unpleasant. Okay, so now that I've covered the basics, I'd like to talk in a bit more detail about each of the type of unit. So first, I've got all the mortars up basically. Mortars are great at attacking troops in urban areas, attacking troops in a tree line. Pretty accurate for their range, though they also have a reasonable dispersion so that if you want to smoke an area, they will smoke it quite well. And they have a lot of ammo, so they don't need rearming very often thus making them a very versatile unit that you can keep close to the front lines without having to worry about driving them back to rearm them too often. They are accurate enough in the cities that they can hit buildings without hitting your own troops, so they're great if you're advancing in the cities. Their ranges are from about 3,800 to 9,100 meters, most are 7,700 meters, there's one Israeli one that is 9,100 meters. And there's a bit of a theme with Israeli artillery and we'll get on to that. So the next set of units are your more standard howitzer or barrage artillery. There's two variants here and I, I want to explain that they're separate. So there's barrage artillery and there's tube artillery. They aren't the same, they're for two different things. So first let's talk about the barrage artillery. So that's things like the MSTAS or the American M109A2 or M109A6 Paladin. These have a range of approximately 11,000 to 42,000 meters. Again, the 42,000 meters is an Israeli one and it's slightly higher than all the others. Make of that what you will. The other thing to note here is that these aren't the best at sniping. They have a slightly bigger dispersion at their longer ranges, which means that while they can be used for sniping, not every shot is going to hit, some of them are going to miss. 
They are, however, very good for counter battery fire if you're wanting to take out enemy artillery as they're firing. Something to bear in mind with that is that most of these units take quite a long time to aim. Something to bear in mind when using them. However, there are a number of these units which do fire much faster. The aiming time, for example, of the Paladin and the MSTA-S is 10 seconds because these units have what is apparently called an advanced fire control system. And there are several other units such as the Caesar, and the AS-90 and a few others which also have this. However, most of these artillery pieces take upwards of 30 seconds to aim, though there are more of a variety now which are anything between 20 and 30 seconds. The other thing to mention is that they're very good for just bombarding an area where you know there are troops or units and they will do damage. They won't necessarily kill vehicles because they don't have a huge HG power, especially tanks, but they will kill infantry, they will stun and panic vehicles, and they will definitely do damage to smaller vehicles. So this type of artillery is your general all around use it for everything artillery. Next, let's have a think about the tube artillery. So the tube artillery has ranges about 15 to 50,000 meters. These are more specialized and aimed at taking out units which are stationary. So for example, sniping enemy CVs, they are much more accurate at range than the barrage unit counterparts. They fire slower, they have big, huge rounds, so they're 203 millimeter rounds usually, and you only get a couple of them per unit. And then you have to rearm them, and they take a lot of rearm points from your fob, and they will drain it very quickly. However, they should pay for themselves very quickly, because if you're using them correctly, they will be taking out big enemy units, such as CVs, armoured units that are maybe sat in a tree line. These are specifically for that task. Then finally, let's talk about rocket artillery for the few main types, and then we'll talk about some special ones. So the MLRS, Multiple Rocket Launcher Systems. These are used a lot by new players because they look very pretty and they fire a lot of rockets and people think they're going to do something useful. They're not. The way people use them most of the time is useless. These have a very specific job. They are very good at panicking units. If you fire them at a town, they're not going to do very much unless they're a special napalm variant, which we'll get into after this. But if they're just the standard rockets and you bombard a town with them, if you bombard a forest with them, they're not going to kill the units. They're going to make them panic though. And this is something that can be very useful. So if you are going to attack an enemy defensive line, and that is a very strong defensive line, before you move your troops up, or as your troops are moving, hit the enemy defensive line with a rocket artillery barrage from multiple units. Those units in the defensive line will panic, they will be stunned, they will be useless as your advancing troops hit them head on. Equally, if you have an enemy which is pushing really hard and you are crumbling at your front line, hit them with a rocket barrage. Again, it's going to stun them, panic them, and decimate what is their advancing line. And you're probably going to be able to hold your position. No guarantees, but every little helps. Their ranges are very varied. Most of them have quite a short range. Some of them have a much longer range but their dispersion is huge no matter what the range is so they're going to hit a very wide area and that's why they're not going to do a huge amount of damage now there are exceptions to that rule such as the russian uragan it has a much longer range and its dispersion therefore over that range is equivalent to less overall so it can fire in a much more concentrated area equally look at the price compared to the grad it's a lot more expensive. It has a more useful role in hitting enemy lines and actually damaging and killing units. So now let's talk about more specialist units. We've already mentioned a couple of them to be fair. So let's think about the Smirch. This is a unit which does a huge amount of damage to armored units because it has AP power. It has cluster shells or cluster munitions. And we can actually just bring up the ones with cluster munitions. What you will notice is most of them have a very low AP power, though they will damage vehicles, 
they're not going to do a huge amount of damage to vehicles. But your special units, such as the Smirch and the M207 ATA CMS that we talked about before, these are going to do huge amounts of damage to whatever they hit because they have a higher AP damage. The Smirch has a lot more rockets, so it's going to hit the target multiple times. The M270 is going to hit a single target or a couple of targets that stood next to each other and hopefully kill them in one hit because of that massive AP power that is going to be hitting on top of the vehicle's armor. Then the other one I wanted to talk about was napalm units. These are units which are devastating to infantry. There's no getting around it, infantry will be killed by these units. And as I said in the earlier part of the video, the Buratino is one of my favourite units, if not my favourite unit, but also the bane of my existence when I'm playing against it. These are devastating weapons when used against infantry in buildings or in forests because the napalm just kills infantry so quickly and you are lucky to get any units out. If I see Buratino fire coming in on my unit, I will try and run them away if they're in a forest. If they're in a town, it's probably too late. I'm not going to get them out in time. What I will note about these units is they tend to have quite a low range. It, looking through them there, I think the maximum is about 17,000, but the dispersion on that is huge, so it's not going to be very useful at that range. The Buratino has probably one of the lowest ranges, 3,500, but it has the highest HE power at 10. Nothing else comes close to that if I just quickly scan through them. You know, HE power is one for all the others. So there's, there's no comparison. If you can get it, you want the Buratino because that's the one that's going to do the damage. But the other ones will do some damage. There is a use for them. They're not useless. So that about wraps up artillery. We've talked about the four main types. We've talked a little bit about the more specialized munitions, the clusters and the napalm. What you're going to want to do now is go and experiment with the artillery because practice makes perfect and you'll find which units work best for what and work out the time to target for these units and what works best for you and what you're trying to do. Little tip, if you are taking artillery into a game, take your own fob because you will drain everyone else's fob and you know that can be quite frustrating if they suddenly need some reinforcement on the front line and they can't get any supplies up there. Other than that, thanks very much for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know down below in the comments if you would like a guide on anything else to do with Wargame and I will certainly look into it. I do appreciate any feedback, both positive and negative. And as always, please like, share and subscribe. Have a fantastic week.